keeping the spirit's fire burning. That is what we are looking at. And our key scripture is First Thessalonians 5.19 in NIV. Do not quench the spirit's fire. Do not quench. Do not put out the spirit's fire. Have obedience is disobedience. If you obey halfway, you are already disobeying God. Supposing I tell you to carry this chair and take it there, but you carry it and take it here. It simply means you have not obeyed because you haven't met the goal. I will still have to get somebody else to accomplish the task. Half obedience is disobedience. You measure the love of God by the level of your obedience. God has given us a lot of commands which we ought to obey. Okay. Singing will not take you to heaven. It will not. Coming to church will not take you to heaven. It is your obedience that will take you to heaven. So the virtue you should be very careful to accomplish in this life or to have in your life is obedience. God says that for you to go to heaven, you give your life to Christ. A question. If you refuse to give your life to Christ and then you continue praying and praying and praying, but you have refused to surrender and to yield your life to Christ. Will you go to heaven? So the only virtue that takes you into the presence of God or that drives you out of the presence of God is obedience. Adam, what caused him to be driven away from Garden of Eden? Disobedience. Not that they talked. Not that they encountered the enemy, the devil. You can encounter the enemy. Even the enemy can come. So the issue of these things are moving on my roof. Roof. See. <laughs> These monitoring spirits, those things are, nay, they cannot prevent you from going to heaven. Devil cannot prevent you from going to heaven. The only person who can prevent you from going to heaven is yourself. Disobedience. Devil can do nothing whatsoever to stop you from going to heaven. It is only you that can stop yourself. Disobedience. Disobedience. That is why if God tells you, please wake up and pray, you need to learn to wake up and pray. If God tells you, go help that person, please wake up, go help that person. If God tells you that, eh, read this chapter of the Bible, please stand up, leave the phone aside, sacrifice, start to read the level of obedience. Disobedience is what can prevent you from seeing glory. If he says, do this, you do. The Bible says, I am a man under authority. And one, I tell one soldier, go and he goes another one come and he comes that is how the kingdom is it operates under authority and therefore we are supposed to listen to instructions listen even when you're reading the bible please read for instructions christians are reading the bible like literature and i heard one mp say the reason we had a problem with gen z is because of the kind of literature which is true mashetani unawafundisha nini are you teaching them kitumbua kimeingia mchanga and we have something else nani ingine 
masaibu ya ndugu njero trials of brother njero we train wrong things to our children and therefore that is what they have begun doing supposing literature was done ikiwa bible unasoma kitabu ya Matthew yote mnaulizwa vile tunauliza ngo literature that is why we must invest in the area of education we must train our children the way they should go and when they grow up they shall not depart from it let me tell you you have to be a person that is too much obedient so when you read the bible please look for instructions to follow ukisoma tu hiyo passage of scripture kwa unajiuliza what is god telling me to do only that even if you read two verses or one verse it is not the quantity that matters but it is only one area what am i supposed to do if i have a breed of christians here that can be able to read the bible and follow one instruction of the bible every day i know i'll be having a very powerful church it will change this environment jiuliza bible inakwambia nini ukiamka tu ifungue hivi whether you open it like that the way i used to open it there are some people who open like that and they tell you where to read whether you open it like that or not please ask yourself what is it that it is telling me to do utakuta mahali pamoja umesoma imekwambia unasikia ufanye kitu fulani just do it i've learned how to obey the bible the bible more than anything else obey the bible just obey it you never regret you never regret it shows the great love for god the other thing that shows great love for god an intense love for god remember we are looking at the fire of the spirit and we are saying the fire of the spirit is when it is when you have an intense love for god intense intense is deep love very deep and we are looking at what measures your love towards god and we have said number one is what you can forego and we have said number two it is your level of obedience but number three it is you are giving number three it is your giving giving shows how much you love john 3:16 for god so loved the world that he gave romans 5:8 the bible says god demonstrated his love in this that while we were still sinners Christ died for us. You are level of giving. Have you ever realized the people you don't care about you give little amount? Like if you meet a street boy on your way out of the supermarket and tells you auntie auntie give me something what do you give the coins not even 50 bob you look for 10 bob or 5 bob you give that person because you do not value that person you are giving us a great significance to one's love if my wife tells me please give me some money will i give you five bob 
at I love you so much, honey. Five bob, five bob. The quantity you give determines the love. I was praying through the media and somebody told me I want to give something. And do you know what he gave? A piece of land. I have <laughs> seen him once when he was giving me that piece of land. A piece of land. 50 by 100 in Joska. And that is why we give unconsciously or without reason because we are feeling like it is pastors that are eating away the money. I cannot tell the last time I ate money belonging to this ministry. I cannot tell. Actually, other people in this ministry eat more money than I do. I was staring the Konkaliuki yesterday. It is not about Okay, let me leave that. But your level of giving determines. Give. How much do you give? It shows the value. It shows the value. If I ask you, buy me tea, or if you want to buy me lunch, how much will you give me? Charity, you have thought. But I'm sure you won't buy me 20 bob. I'm very sure. I'm also very sure. Some of you, the reason why you haven't bought me lunch, it is because you felt like what you need to buy lunch is too little. So you are waiting for it to be enough. Why can't you do that to God? Why can't you do that to God? We are treating God with a pocket change. Whatever remains after you buy no cooking and the boil after you buy mikate asubui and our mother asked ask us that question one day here we eat bread in the morning and whatever you have taken in the morning bread is 70 75 65 okay i don't know no <laughs> Bread, milk, sugar, calculate all that, soap, which you have used to bathe yourself. Faith in Bilaku County is with two men, Jipakauk. There are many things, they are very costly. If we imagine this morning, what value have you consumed? vis a vis the value that you are going to receive.
this living sacrifice. Just imagine. Is it a living sacrifice or a dead one? Giving. If I say I'm coming to your house today, Stella, for breakfast, what will you cook? From breakfast. I'm passing by. Ama, niseme. Sai, I'm passing by for lunch. Nikitoka tu hapa. Nitapitia. And I want you to buy me. I want, I want to eat lunch in your house. What will you prepare? Some of you, you even borrow. So that I eat well. I am a man. Just like you. What of a God who created the men, the kind of men we are? You are giving. You are giving. Is the exact replica of the value that you place to one's God. And your value is determined, the value that you place on God is determined by the love that you're giving him. The love you have to answer him. The love. I know some of you when you give him 50, you have given all you had to live on. That is a tick. But some of you when you give 50, it is an insult to God. Some of us, when we give a thousand, it is an insult to God. To others, when they give a thousand, it is a sacrifice. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 16 there. Let me see. Three times a year all your men and 17 you must appear before the Lord your God at the place you will choose at the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. No man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Look at 17. I want you to see that. 17 is very key. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way that the Lord your God has blessed you. There are some of you giving a hundred is an insult. There are some of you when giving a hundred is a sacrifice. In proportion. In proportion. So you need to ask yourself what is my proportion. So that is why God when he is asking for tithing doesn't ask for each one of you to bring 10,000. No. He says 10%. That simply means even your offering should be in that proportion. You should say 10% or 20% or 5% is what I will be giving to God out of my money. But if tithing is also a problem to you, how much more offering? But let me tell you church, if we have to change and to have dominion, we must use spiritual ways. I realize sometimes I try to use physical ways. You know I try, I, I try everything. I try physical ways to succeed. I feel 
because when you get to physical ways you are getting into into a realm whereby there are better professionals and better people than you so remove yourself from among them and go to spiritual ways like if you want to run business some of you are in business if you run business the way they run you will fail you will compete with them they will defeat you but if you decide to go godly way they cannot defeat you why because you are downloading things from heaven and that is how it should be you cannot do it the way they do it you cannot use their ways isaiah 55 the bible says their ways are not like his ways just as heaven is far from the earth so the ways of god are higher than our ways that is why we need to move in his ways let us learn to maintain that intense love for god you do not say god i love you just by saying you say god i love you by actions and the action is giving the action is the action is giving the action is obedience the action is foregoing some things once you do that you're going to go i know how you used to love god the moment you gave your life to christ you loved him a lot but right now do you love him do you feel great love for him i know how you loved church you are saying Psalm 122 verse 1. I rejoice when they told me let us go into the house of God. But do you still love church? Do you still love church? Do you still love the meetings and coming to church? Or do you still feel that it is a burden that Sunday is your sleeping day Sunday is your time to be free do you still love God we say do you measure the love of God by what you forego whether you can forego something for the sake of the kingdom and we say do you love God by your giving the extent to which you give is the extent to which you love God for God so loved the world he gave God demonstrated his love in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us by your level of obedience To the voice of God. John chapter 15 and verse number 10. John 15 and verse number 10. If you obey my commands, you remain in my love. That means if you do not obey his commands you do not abide in him you do not abide in his love just as i have obeyed my father's commands and remained in his love that means obedience is what causes you to remain in the love of god so when we say you have the fire of the spirit 
what we are saying is that you have an intense love for God. You love God. You love God. And in the book of Mark, the Bible says, is it Mark 12, 30, or which one? The Bible says, I will love the Lord with all Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Fourfold. If you want to love God, if you want to know, you love Him fourfold. The fourfold love of God. Love for God. You love Him with your heart. It simply means spiritually love him. Spiritually love him. Do you love him spiritually? Where the spirit we are called to his spirit. You love him spiritually. Do you pray to him? Do you read the Bible the way it tells you to do? Spiritual things. Do you love him spiritually? Number two, with all your soul. That simply means emotionally. Do you love God emotionally? That means you feel it. You feel it. There are some people, even if we sing too many worship songs, they do not feel anything. Do you feel God? Feeling Him. And you start crying because obviously you have begun to emotionally connect with Him. Love is emotional. There is no way you can say that you love somebody and you are not emotionally connected to that person. Have you ever realized when your boyfriend or girlfriend comes or calls you, there is something you feel. That is the same, same way. Or some of you, even when you are trying to call, if I tell you now, call the governor, what will you feel? That is how you should be feeling when you are praying. Should feel it. Should feel sweetness. Feel sweetness when you're with him. you feel him when was the last time you cried in church you are too carnal some of you you are too carnal you do not feel anything come and stay like that even when you are hearing the word of God you are feeling nothing but there are some people who cannot contain it 
you realize they are doing like that throughout because fire is burning inside of them but you're just there you're feeling nothing in your spirit you're feeling nothing you're just like that even when we see a rhythm like that one you're feeling nothing you're just there feeling nothing yawning asking when shall we leave it's because you do not love God you love God emotionally if God speaks to you or you read the Bible like that you feel sweet Jeremiah said when I took the straw the scroll and I ate it this is Jeremiah or Ezekiel I ate it was sweet to my mouth you need to have it sweet to your to the mouth shouldn't be asking when shall the preacher stand I am feeling like hearing the word of God I am feeling like it how comes you do not even feel like hearing the word of God because your spirit is very far away and your emotions are also very far away that is why you satisfy you satisfy what your soul likes your behavior will show you what you like what you feel like like when you pick your tiktok like this or when you pick your phone like this what do you want to hear what do you want to get from that phone some of you you want relationship because the radios have saturated you with demonic spirits of immorality every morning every radio is talking about immorality it is talking oh niliachana na huyo mtu let me tell you kenani let me tell you what because that is what they talk that is what you want to hear you want to hear people have divorced you want to hear people are bad you want to hear men how they are punished by women and how women are punished by men that is what is in your heart that is what satisfies your emotions some of you pick the phone like that you want to see naked women so that is what satisfies your emotion that is what you are feeding what are you feeding it is as simple as that it is your soul what is that that you feed what is that that satisfies you mugikana mtu hivi muonge what do you want him to talk about what is this that you want him to talk about some of you mnataka onge gossip some of you unataka muonge politics like another prayer 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 group we have every time we meet we are meeting for prayer we first of all try to examine what is happening in the land and we spend one hour then we pray for 20 minutes talking politics i want to exit what is this that you want to hear ukienda kwa music yako ni nini unataka ukienda uwashe ukufa inaitangwa huva ama huva whatever uh, ukienda uiwashe what do you want unaweka bluetooth hapo unaanza kuimba what is this that you want to listen some of you are kanungo kanungo you are too nungali because there is nothing again that you want to hear that is godly at all at all it shows what you are satisfying it shows your emotions to kiss my time to give to kiss my time to fast to kiss my time to pray how do you feel inside of you like right now you have been told from wednesday we shall be praying so what do you feel inside of you what are you saying we have been told it's fasting we are fasting from wednesday thursday and friday so in your mind because you have been told and you have read in that bulletin what do you want to do what have you said in your mind some of you you haven't even heard it you haven't 
you haven't even had it. You don't know whether there is anything like that. Because your appetites are full. They have made their stomachs their gods. And God will destroy both the stomach and the stomach carrier. What is this that makes you feel okay? That is what we are calling emotions. You know, sometimes I sit with so much things, thinking about money, thinking about management. I sit and I read. But I keep on asking myself, now after I've read all this, have I read anything godly? Sometimes you may get carried by your passion. Be passionate when you are loving God. That is what it means to love him with your soul. Be passionate. Love God. Love pastors. You should not be there talking to eh, talking to pastors, talking about them wrongly. Oh, pastors nowadays, if you love God, you love whatever belongs to Him. Be passionate. Be passionate for the things of God. Be passionate for the issues of God. Be passionate. But the Bible says also love him with your mind. That means mentality. Your mentality should always be inclined towards God. So as you run the business, I know you have other principles. But do you, you have the principles of cash flow. You have the principles of what? But do you have in the principles of cash flows of your business, do you have something godly? Like give. Like eh? the business should die. Do you have such mentalities of God within you? The Bible says in Psalm chapter number 10 and verse number 4. The Bible says, Psalm chapter number 10 and verse number 4. Are we there? Psalm 10, verse number 4. Number 4. In his pride, the weekend does not seek him. He know his thought. There is no room for who? There is no room for who? So as you think the way you think, and we shall know it by what you post on your Facebook. We know it. And TikTok. Your TikTok you are doing like this. So this is what is there in your mind. It's nothing else. How can you in your TikTok or all you can afford is to show people your buttocks? It simply means in your mind that is what is there. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. We know what you post. So if I see you posting and you are saying godliness, even if I read your post like that, I will tell you whether it is in the Bible or not. You do not need to quote the Bible, no. But I will tell. If I check your comments, I will know whether there is a godly person or not. Whether there is any room for God. Do you have your mind having God in themselves? Do you have any room? Do you have any space for God in your mind? Or your hand, if we open it like that, we will get only biology. People know biology in your hand. We open your hand like that. All that which we can see is biology and chemistry, titration. There is nothing else. What is there if we open your hand like that and we place your mind? If we ask now, Georgian, 
we ask now everybody to remove the mind and we place them here we see what people are thinking what shall we find in your mind and you stay here we look some of you will be will be having girls in their mind girls 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 i love girls i love babes i love girls some of you is money 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 i love money like my hand requires to be refurbished money 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 some of you is success success some of you is only family you only think about family family it is true family is good but do you have room for god money is good but do you have room for god it is true your mother is good ebu imagine some of you is only your mother that is occupying 80% of your mind oh mother mami uko happy in morning i wish you could be praying to god like that in the morning you call your mother at the 10 you call your mother Twelve of you call your mother. I wish you are calling God like that. You won't be very far. Very far. Some of you is your pastor who is in your mind. You always think about John Mukundi. Nothing else. Do you have room for God? Do you have space for God? You should love the Lord with all you are. heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength so number four strength physically love him that is why you should not come to church when you are tired when we are singing is when you are sitting down looking at us or when we are praying is physically love god physically That is why Nigerian church loves God this way. They pray this way. You shouldn't be praying that way. Not physically. Physically love God. That is why you should stand up and begin walking. Raka shut up. And you are walking. Until your people give you space. Because of the way you love God with your strength. Strength also means money and resources. Love God with your strength. It simply means that when people are you have a resource you know how to cook so when we have something here we are cooking Georgian is here loving God with your strength that is what it means some of you you already know what we can do with this camera and what we can do with this media but you are just sitting there waiting for things to happen it wants to say ma and you go naambia but you know you can do something but you're not loving god loving god is not just coming here and staying here some of you you are very good at inviting people outside there you can go and tell people come and you know there are several people in your in your in your uh, apartment who doesn't go to church who don't go to church and is you know very well you have a very sweet mouth kwa hiyo nini hizo plot zenu plot 10 kwa hiyo plot yenu you already know very well that you are the influencer everybody borrows salt from you and everybody can open up and tell you sijui uh, token zinaisha sana and you see they can be able to do that to you but you do not take any advantage of inviting anybody to church you just mum Because you are quiet. Are you loving God with your strength? People will go to hell on account of you. And don't think you will not be answerable. You will be answerable. There are some people who can only give their lives to Christ. They can be delivered because of you. And that is where you need to be very careful. See at unapita mtu hapo unamsalimia tu. Some of you is beauty. Your beauty can captivate people to come to church. When you pass like that girls and boys are left ah, and you are just there instead of using that beauty and you bring people to the kingdom of God. You're just using that beauty to make videos on TikTok. It doesn't make sense. 
doesn't make sense doesn't make sense we require to be people that are too much given too much given into loving God with our strength whatever resource you have some of you is dressing you know how to dress people very well why can't you be telling us now on sunday our theme color is red like today it was almost maroon i saw like that i have seen a lot of people in that are you in the spirit Strength is very important, very key. Serve God with your talents, serve God with your gifts, serve God with your power, serve God with your might, serve God with your skills, serve God with everything that you have. Once you do that, you will be going up. Some of you you have a place you can house people for a cell meeting but you don't like na ingine wanasema mambo ya church tuliachana nayo mbali sana hata huko church by the way i hear your voices Sometimes you speak in secret but I hear them a lot I hear them Like in this church there are some people who are saying that you do not need that to give in yourself too much into church Mi mambo ya kanisa niliachana nayo mimi naendaka kusikiza ninamaliza narudi nyumbani This church is not like any other church. We are not here to exploit anybody. We are here to make you go to heaven. I told you if I wanted money, I would have done it the way I do business. Church kuifanya vile ninafanya business. Anaweza But you see church is different. Church is too different. Not every other church you are seeing multitudes. I thank God we are a big church also. But not every other church you are seeing at multitudes and multitudes that God is there. Like in this assembly I can count some of the churches you think and i am not saying churches are bad we need to keep on praying for them and they need to keep on being opened because if they want to increase the drunkards they open up churches they open up bars if we want to increase believers we open up churches provided we preach well the issue is never allow yourself to be misused and we are not here to misuse anybody some of us are enough to do whatever needs to be done in church enough single handedly enough But if some of us keep on doing what should be done alone when shall others be blessed because of participating in church
like if we have to put a ceiling here and somebody comes and puts a loan when will others get blessed because of that because God loves a cheerful giver so if you are not giving when will you receive that love of cheerful giving give and it shall be given to you when shall you receive when you have not given because some of us can do everything we can finance the Sunday school we can cook we can pay the water bills we can pay electricity we can buy the seats we can buy the cameras we can buy everything. We can do everything. It's not even capital intensive. We can buy the screen. Like I'm feeling like we need to buy the screen here. We will buy the screen. I'm feeling we need a screen. We need a big screen. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling like we need a screen. And they can decide to buy that screen alone. So, when will be trace be blessed if one day buys alone? Some of you are saying you are in college, you are babies. When will you be blessed? the Lord. Love the Lord. So you cannot say you love God when you are not obeying Him. You cannot say you love God when you are not forsaking some things for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of His kingdom. You cannot say you are loving God when you are not giving. And you need to involve four faculties in loving God. Spiritual faculties. Number two, emotional faculties. Number three, What else? Mental faculties and number four. Physical faculties. If you do not do that, you will not be able to love God. No, I thought I would define everything today. But the second definition I will do on Wednesday. The second definition is the Gen Z's. The Gen Z definition. When you say that you have the spirit fire, you must have that quality that the Gen Z's had. It is called fearlessness. Fearlessness. I hand Gen Z's, they have only one fear to marry. <laughs> Cannot marry. All the other fears they don't have. I want you to tell God, God, I want to love you more. 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 Jehovah, I want to love you more. Raka shila la la baka sulu. Temeke shata kasoko rabako tane. Yes, I want to love you more. I will sacrifice more. I will forego 
yes so many of my things for the sake of your kingdom I will love you more 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 are you telling God that you want to have an intense love for him yes where you have not been obedient tell him I am sorry I will be obedient where you have not been giving tell him God I am sorry I will begin giving in the name of Jesus where you have not yes been for going things for the sake of the kingdom tell him God help me in the mighty name of Jesus here today in the mighty name of Jesus I shall receive my victory here today even though outwardly I may be wearing away, but inwardly I know I am being renewed. Day in and day out, I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise, Lord. Renew your people today. Renew them today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. Say amen. I want us to pray for Kenya. I want you to declare Kenya. It shall remain with ruled by the altar of the Almighty God. No other altar shall be able to stand in this nation. I want you to install the altar of God upon Kenya right now. Call it Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. Repeat after me, Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. We command you that you shall not accept any other altar except the altar of God can you pray that prayer right now let every other altar that is being lifted be destroyed right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ I give you praise I give you praise I give you praise Jehovah no other altar no demonic altar no any other altar shall be able to stand except the altar of the Almighty God I give you praise I give you honor no other altar except your altar God no other altar we destroy the forces of darkness we destroy the forces of bloodshed we destroy the forces of evil we destroy and we declare your altar shall remain standing again in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus name we have prayed say amen I also want you because you live in Embu you pray that any cloud of darkness that is covering this land of Embu vanish in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer right now. In the cloud of darkness over this land, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that any cloud of darkness over our county, over this Embu, we now blow it away. The Bible says just as wax cannot be able to stand against the fire. Just as a smoker cannot be able to stand against them. Yes, the weed. So are the enemies of the Almighty God. I declare every enemy of the Almighty God. I command that you are now defeated. You are blown away in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our declaration in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Say amen. You know, whatever is happening, don't ever think that it is Generation Z. No, this is more than whatever you see. And that is why I don't care which generation you come from. But I don't care which generation I am in. What you need to understand is that there is an altar that the church planted in Kenya. And that altar is what is being fought. That altar. I know you may be thinking, Ruto is bad. Even if you want to say that a hundred times, you can say. But remember, 
in the book of Romans 13, verse number one and verse number two, the Bible says, for there is no authority that exists without the knowledge and without the installation of God. There is no way Ruto is there because of nothing. We prayed him in. He was prayed in. And therefore you can be sure there is something I cannot tell. But I am feeling there is something. It is more than finance bill. He rejected the finance bill. The fact that now Kibali is my son. If he messes up and, and install him, does he cease to become my son? Does he cease to become my son? How comes now it is Ruto who is bad? If it was a finance bill, it is the finance bill. It is not the president. It does not personalize the issues. I know he could have changed, and I know he changed after he got into power. But we need to pray for him. The Bible says, let every person lift up his hands and pray, first of all, for the authorities, for the leaders. We are supposed to pray for the leaders, not the other way. We are not supposed to join at the root of us. Go where? Where? Let him finish his term. And mark my ones, I am not fearing any Gen X. And I am not fearing any Gen Z. Let you listen to me. There is no way Ruto will get into power before his term is complete. You can go where you want to go. But listen, I am speaking as a servant of God. Listen to what I am saying. He is going nowhere. I know he may have lifted the taxes. I am feeling even bad. I have some tax cases which I paid. I am feeling bad. But let me tell you. Let me tell you. Mutoto akikuwa mchafu au tupangi na karai. And Ruto is the image of the church. He is the image of the church. So everything you are seeing Ruto being done, it is done because we are being told we are the people who instituted him into authority. It is us that are being told we are bad. Until when I talked in another WhatsApp group and I was told you keep quiet because you are the people who have brought these problems. No, we never brought the problem. God spoke to us and he said Ruto should be in authority and he is a pastor. The problem I have with Ruto is one, just one. We set him as the altar. We made him the pastor of this land. He went actually to destroy himself with other people. The problem is the company he took. The advisors that he took have really messed him up. And he has to change. If he doesn't change, he will continue fighting. And fighting and fighting. I am not speaking for any man. I am speaking the oracles of God. So you have to understand today that it is important that we pray and we pray the power and the will of God to be done. And those prophets that are prophesying everywhere, prophesying, oh, Ruto will die, those are liars. Let them know we are not ready to bury our president. And even if God had said that he will die, Ezekiah was told you die by prophet Isaiah. But he said, God said, he went to the war and said, God, remember the work in which I have done. God can forgive and can change judgments. That is why we are here today also to declare any judgment passed against our nation, against our president. It is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And they are not saying that out of nothing. You know the bloodshed we have here. The property destroyed. People have died. They have died. And you want to tell me a peaceful demonstration? Those are no peaceful demonstrations. Those are demons that are looking for blood. I am not ready to sacrifice our young men. I am not ready to sacrifice anybody. For the sake of demons. It doesn't matter what has been done. Again, I repeat. What matters it is we are not going to sacrifice to the devils. We are not going to give in to the powers of darkness. We are not going to do that. The problem again, and I want to advise Ruto, 
what was born in the altar must be sustained by that altar. The problem with him is that you have heard me say, he lost the respect even for the altar. He started calling people to close the church. Even here, you know who are going to close the church that he is coming for a church service. I said I cannot go there. I cannot leave the altar to go. Who is he to actually even make the churches? That is, that is lack of manners, spiritual manners. He lacks manners. He cannot call bishops to go to him. They close their churches. At we close all churches in Embu and go, we worship together. Just because the president is coming. He also has a soul. He also has a spirit. He is subjected to faith evangelistic ministries. He should go there and listen to the pastor. Otherwise, he, shall also, he can also go to hell. He is a, not that he is the president, he will not be judged. That is the problem we have. That is the issue we have. The problem with Joseph was that he called the father. Joseph saying, go and bring the father instead of him going to where the father was. So he cannot just sit down. And that is why Joseph right now as we speak, he is not a tribe of Abraham, a, a, a tribe of Israel. Have you ever heard the tribe of Joseph? But we have Manasseh and Ephraim, his sons. And you cannot tell me that Kenyatta is now good. He destroyed the economy. I am calling them names because they are my daughter. If they want to come for me, let them. Who cares? They cannot kill a dead man. I'm already dead. But let them understand that the problem we have with him he disrespected the altar that instituted him to become the president. And that is the problem he has. And until now, he is ignoring. The only people he is calling are those big stomach bishops who are looking for brown envelopes and bishops you are on notice power has changed hands we are now in control they shouldn't understand wait they cannot be called to the state house just to be given money and they cannot tell him the truth what kind of bishops are those? He refused. We shall not be bought. You cannot buy the gift of God using your dirty money. Some of us, we cannot be bought. Some of us, we cannot. And they used to speak to the governor. Why now do we have Rampages in Embu. Embu has been known to be a peaceful town. Why now? Which authority has come? We know. We understand the things of the spirit. Which is this authority that has come? Such that we have never had a problem in Embu. Why now? Why now? That we have destruction of property in Embu. Embu is known as a peaceful town and Embu shall remain peaceful so long as they are here. Whatever must go, must go. But that witchcraft that has been brought in Embu, we want to, to give it a notice. Let them understand. We cannot eat on the same table with Jezebel. We cannot eat on the same table with witches. We are praying the altar of God will remain. And I know who I am in this temple. 
I know my position. I know who I am. So don't go speaking like that because they have spoken like that. I know who I am in the spiritual realm. I know what I am. Not who. And those evil powers that they have brought in this land, I want to be clear, they are crumbling today in the name of Jesus. They cannot stand. Can you crumble them again? In the name of Jesus, we command them. Let them come down. Let them come down. Let them come down. In the name of Jesus. I'm not looking for any seats. If anything, I could have been the MP now. Or the governor. I know. But I know what controlled me. I cannot. I know who I am. I am not looking for seats. I don't even require those appointed seats. I know where I'm going. I know what I am. And therefore, it is important that people know that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. It is not against Gen Z's. It is against spirit. It is against principalities. It is against powers. It is against authorities. It is against dominions. It is against dominions. And I want to bring those dominions down. I want to destroy those dominions now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to break those dominions now. Those blind, thirsty demons, I command them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let them come down. In Jesus name. Even those people that are dying, they are not people who are in demonstration. So what do you want to tell me? Some of them, like that child I saw in Rongai, was he in demonstration? Like these cars that were burnt here, were they in demonstration? There were some people, I know two friends of mine, whose cars were destroyed that day. Were they in demonstration? My own car here was smashed the window. Was I in demonstration? Was I there? And you want to tell me it's Gen Z's. Which Gen Z's? It is demonic forces. But they have known we shall enter through there. And they are telling us there is no leader. How can you tell me that we are occupying state house? We are too organized and there is no leadership. There is something that is controlling. There is a leader that is controlling. And we need to arrest those forces. If finance B, which was the problem, was rejected in its entirety, which other problem do we have? What other problem do we have? And you want to tell me it's normal. It is not. It is not. I was supporting them to reject the finance bill. But right now, I am not supporting them. Right now, we are not together. We are not. And let it be on record. That creep, let it go on record. What they have said. Because I am not speaking for myself. I am speaking for the kingdom of God. I'm not attacking any man. I am attacking spirits. And even if it is not on viral, spirits have heard me. I know how they hear me. They have heard. Let us keep on praying. Pray. Now 2027.
God bless you. God bless you. you can have your seats. the spirit fire burning that is what we are looking at and our key scripture is first Thessalonians 5 19 in NIV do not quench the spirit's fire do not quench do not put out the spirit's fire that is what we are standing I know how you used to love God the moment you gave your life to Christ. You loved him a lot. But right now, do you love him? Do you feel great love for him? I know how you loved church. You are saying Psalm 122 verse 1. I rejoice when they told me let us go into the house of God. But do you still love church? Do you still love church? Do you still love the meetings and coming to church? Or do you still feel that it is a burden that Sunday is your sleeping day? Sunday